and showtime ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the channel pro five minute roundup a look at news trends and tips for the smb channel in five minutes or thereabouts my name is rich freeman i am a co-host of this program also executive editor of the channel pro network i am joined by your other co-host this week eric simpson the business transformation and improvement advisor to msps and other it providers eric how you doing I'm doing well, Rich. Uh, you and I both are doing better than we have been doing the last few days amongst a little bit of a travel uh, uh, scenario. How did your travel end up? Did you have any flight delays, any reschedules, anything like that? I didn't, luckily, knock on wood. You know what? Same same story. Flight left on time. If anything, we got in a little bit uh, early. It was smooth and easy as can be. I, I did get some emails from folks uh, who, who were not quite as fortunate on their way home, but uh, but we we both we we are um, referring folks. Uh, the two of us uh, attended an event that we're actually going to be talking about in the show this week, which was the DattoCon conference in Washington D.C. Um, it's a, it's a little unclear. Kaseya, which owns Datto now and therefore was hosting this event, was telling people um, they had 2,700 people. I'm not sure it was quite that many, but there were a lot of people there. It was a big venue, big enough. That Eric and I were both at the show for several days and did not see each other there. We're both home now, and this is really our first chance to even talk about it because we just didn't uh, talk to each other uh, at all at the show. Yeah, I know, Rich. Absence just makes the heart grow fonder for the next time we're at a show to reconnect and do the five-minute roundup like we like to do when we're both at the same location, right? Bringing it to you from the show itself. So we'll we'll. We'll make good on that next time. All right. Well, let's just get to it because uh, our story of the week, folks, our top story is, in fact, about DattoCon. Um, and really what I'm going to do here is just give you my impression about that show and, and what uh, Kaseya and Datto accomplished from their perspective at that show and give you a rough sense um, from what I heard uh, or about what I heard from the partners there about their response to the event. And, and basically, Eric, you know, they, they were very intent. They were aware of the fact, um, especially Kaseya CEO, Fred Vicola, that this was a critical moment, a critical opportunity to address the Datto partners and not just any Datto partners, but the, the really kind of committed ones who make the trip out to DattoCon when it uh, takes place in person. Here was his chance to get up in front of them and explain what to expect out of this acquisition, why the acquisition happened. Um, and, you know, he delivered a number of, of very important messages there. I mean, he, uh, he said, we are not uh, making any cuts. We are making investments. If you include the $6.2 billion that we spent to, to purchase data in the first place, we're putting $14 billion into this investment total. And um, that's going to be around um, increasing the uh, development organization, increasing the account management organization, increasing the technical support organization, which I'll come back to in a minute, um, doubling MDF, uh, more than tripling the size of the staff assigned to the partner program. So big investments coming. Um, uh, the, you know, he made a point of emphasizing that we will not be changing licenses or contract terms uh, at Kaseya. We will not be forcing people into three, five, seven year terms. We will not be canceling any of the products. And he used Datto RMM and, and Kaseya VSA uh, to kind of uh, illustrate this. But he said, you know, the, the products on both sides uh, of the relationship, Kaseya and Datto, none of those are going away. Um, and then he also just kind of tried to make the case basically to help people understand why they shouldn't be um, afraid about what comes next from his perspective. And, and basically what he said, the way he summarized it to me in an interview later was our entire business model, our entire strategy for success is to align our interests with the interests of our partners. And by that, what he means is, look, what's our interest at Kaseya? We, we want to have as many different products in as, in as many different categories as possible and sell as many of those to as many MSPs as possible. Well, what do you want as an MSP? You, you want to uh, spend less, you wanna make more, you wanna get more done. And from Kaseya's perspective, if they can sell you a whole bunch of very tightly integrated products at very competitive prices, you're gonna get what you want, what you want because you are going to be more uh, efficient, you're gonna be spending less on your tools, you're gonna be making more money, and obviously they're going to get what they want because they are your supplier of choice for a lot of the different systems that you rely on. Um, so that was the message that they were delivering and, and some of the specifics around what, uh, what to expect. 
Um, I'll be very curious to get your impression, Eric. What I came home um, thinking, um, based on conversations that I had with a lot of Datto partners I know who were at the show, um, is that by and large, they kind of liked what they heard. I mean, you know, the, the message from Kaseya was pretty much what people were hoping to hear. Um, and so people were encouraged by that. I think the mood, the buzz among the partners was pretty upbeat. That said, um, there is still a certain amount of wait and see out there. So I like what I heard. So far, so good. Let's see if they actually deliver on what they told us here at the event. So I think um, Kaseya actually, you know, they they made some progress from the, for themselves in terms of reassuring Datto partners a little bit that this is not a doom and gloom scenario for them um, going forward. Um, uh, but I, I do think um, that, you know, even to the degree that uh, partners are feeling a little bit better about things now, they're, they're you know, quite understandably waiting to see. Uh, they talk the talk. Can they walk the walk? Yeah, I think Fred Vacola uh, took lots of deliberate time kind of processing, preparing, making sure that he delivered on the right notes delivered in the appropriate tone, um, you know, to, to, to allow the partners, you know, to understand the why as well as the how. Like you said, he wanted to, to let them into the reasons why the acquisition happened and, and how uh, Kaseya is going to nurture Datto and the relationship moving forward and what to expect moving forward. I think he did a, a very good job of that. Now, of course, there's always, you know, extremists on both sides of any conversation. I the general sense that I uh, heard from the folks that I talked to was, yes, there was cautious optimism, right? Now, the, the folks that are, you know, uh, more, more uh, extreme and optimistic and have had a really good relationships with Kaseya and or Datto are going to be much more optimistic and 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 hear this and 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 uh, you know want to celebrate it. And the folks that you know maybe on the other side of the fence, I got a little bit more you know wait and see kind of like what you did, Rich. But you know my takeaway is, and we've talked about it on the on the show before, is everyone is making these assumptions without having you know, any data or any, you know, reason to move uh, in a negative direction. Uh, certainly positive optimism is, is great. And I think that it's been a learning experience for partners, for Kaseya, for Datto as well. I mean, this is a huge, huge um, deal, a huge acquisition. And I think that everyone is learning from it, right? We now see how something like this can impact a, a market, can impact vendors, can impact partners, can impact the buyer, can impact the seller, right? It's such a huge acquisition. Um, and I dare say the next acquisition made by Kaseya, they will approach it with the learning, right? The, 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 uh, the experience of this and maybe adjust how they present it and get in front of things uh, to reassure. And of course, you know, the success that they have in delivering on Fred Vicola's promise is going to, you know, is going to influence uh, how the next one is received as well. And then partners, on the other hand, also have, are, are experiencing this kind of for the first time. This is huge. And there's going to be a little bit of fear, uncertainty, and doubt for sure. But you know, the guidance is always don't react emotionally, right? Get some data. We as human beings, we tend to do that, right, Rich? It's kind of like, okay, I'm having a knee-jerk reaction here, but let me settle down and let me listen and let me and let me see. And I'm not going to adjust my business model one way or the other. I mean, yes, this is information, but until it materially impacts me one way or the other, and I hope it impacts me positively, like you know, uh, one thing you wrote about, Rich, was, you know, a cost reduction in some data services that Fred mentioned, right? Why don't you talk about that a little bit? And, and just, I think that's also delivering on a promise that that uh, Kaseya made early on as well. We want to reduce prices, uh, you know, as we move forward for partners. 
Yeah, I mean, and I can touch quickly on a few things about this transaction that um, are beneficial not only for the Datto partners, but for the Kaseya ones. So <laughs> what you're referring to right there is on September 1st, a new rate chart went into effect for Datto products. On average, those products, net in, we're talking net new purchases. If you've, uh, you've got a, a subscription or a contract now, there's no change there. But going forward, net new purchases of Datto products on average uh, are going to cost 15% less than they did um, before. Um, you know, there was a lot of concern um, when this uh, acquisition was first announced that the technical support organization at Datto that a lot of people are very, very fond of and, and uh, um, you know, very much admire and, and rely on that this was going to go away. It was, um, you know, Kaseya was going to either uh, break it up or, or uh, uh, change the processes and so on. To the contrary, not only is uh, Kaseya putting money into technical support, they took that Datto technical support organization and turned it into the technical support organization for Datto and Kaseya going forward. And in fact, um, uh, Rob Haggerty, the Datto executive who ran technical support before, continues to run technical support now, but now it's for both Kaseya um, and Datto, using the tools and the processes and everything that made uh, that such an asset for the company uh, in the past. Um, the, the partner program, you know, Datto has a, a partner program with levels and benefits. They've never had that at Kaseya. They do now. If you're a Kaseya partner who, you know, wasn't doing business with Datto before, you now are, have or will very shortly have access to a partner program for the first time. And that means you will have access to MDF. They, they doubled the MDF budget uh, um, for, uh, for Datto and Kaseya. And the, here's your first shot at uh, MDF funding. So, um, a lot of reasons, I think um, cautious optimism, which is what you said, I think there are a lot of reasons why that's not an unreasonable um, uh, thing to come away from that event with. Right. And, and just to, you know, tag on one, one more thought here, what you just expressed are those strategic values that made the acquisition of Datto attractive to Kaseya. I'm sure like, hey, you have a, a partner program that we can adopt and integrate. You have an amazing technical support philosophy that we now can can uh, you know integrate and deliver to all of our Kaseya partners. So again, you know, like I say, Rich, you and I have talked about this and and kind of some of the buzz and the noise uh, and and it just kind of the 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 impression that I get is the message is 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 getting more precise. The message is getting more honed and and it's being potentially received better and the tone is being received better. So I think again, uh, Fred Vicola did exactly what he needed to do at this event. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, we will see as we continue covering the story, um, you know, how that plays out and what the response is from, from the channel. Again, I say, you know, don't make any knee jerk reactions. I mean, look at it from the hundred thousand foot perspective and then make decisions. If you're an MSP or a channel pro accordingly, Right. And don't make these big, dramatic decisions, uh, you know, without having the data to back it up. And from what I'm seeing, the data points that that you've just mentioned and that and that uh, Fred Vicola covered uh, during the event all seem very positive to me. And we, I, we didn't even touch on integrations. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I know that was something that a lot of people were excited to hear about integration, just as a for example, uh, integrations between Autotask and IT Glue, uh, you know, for instance, that haven't existed before. Fundamentally, Eric, the story hasn't changed really um, since we first talked about this back in April when the, the acquisition was first announced. Which, and what we said at the time was we're going to need to wait 12 to 18 months before we really know um, what this means. I think we're still in that, that place. I mean, we, we've heard some things that should be encouraging for Datto partners this week, and now it's a, a wait and see. And Let's just see how it actually uh, shakes out for everybody involved. Agreed. So let's move on to your tip of the week, Eric. This is a good one because you're going to touch on something that um, I hear two very different uh, points of view on from Channel Pro readers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's all about assessments, <laughs> Rich. It's all about technical assessments and security assessments, cloud assessments. I did a webinar today and the topic was all about, you know, how we how we as service providers uh, are supporting our existing clients all wrong and how to fix it. And I said, you know, one many topics during that conversation. Yes, and it was a bold statement. Uh, and I'll double down by saying, listen, 
Times have changed, everybody. You're welcome, right? So it's time to reevaluate and think about your next level of value to your existing clients and new prospects. Understanding what we've been talking about for a while now, Rich, this post-pandemic uh, uh, environment that we now live in, that, that business decision makers are changing their perspective of the value of technology to their businesses and how they're investing more in cybersecurity and cloud solutions and you know remote workforce support hybrid workforce support and all these things and how the impact of things that channel pros and msps can't control is affecting their ability to be more strategic and more profitable i.e supply chain issues right the you know the the the, the bad word right that we always talk about you know and supply chain and things like that and and the current economy and 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 these things where we need to be migrating more toward these higher value service-based strategic services and moving away from more of these product-based services. And I think one of the areas that MSPs and channel pros can take advantage of is when they in engage with a new prospect, right? We're typically going to lead with something like security or cloud or something very specific that allows us an opportunity to have a discussion even when there's an incumbent MSP or IT provider in the mix, right? So if we're leading with cybersecurity, someone accepts our, uh, our appointment to come speak with them because they feel like, okay, yes, I need to hear about this. Maybe my existing provider isn't providing me that, or maybe their expertise isn't what I, what I think it should be, maybe even from a cloud migration perspective, something like that. We're gonna walk into that, uh, into that first meeting, Rich, and of course we're gonna qualify them for there for today's business pain. And I say that underlining and bolding the word today because today's business pain is much different than what it was three years ago, right? We can all agree to that. So now it is all about cybersecurity. It is all about supporting these uh, hybrid workforces and road warriors and things like that. And what I am encouraging everyone to do now is to reevaluate what you are closing that prospect on in that first meeting. Do not close them on something that someone else is providing, i.e., I'm going to pitch you, Rich, on my entire managed IT service stack or my entire cybersecurity solution stack or anything like that, right? Let's take that first consultative step and say, listen, Rich, from what I'm hearing, you know, you have concerns around cybersecurity and maybe supporting your growth, uh, you know, moving forward with this new hybrid workforce thing. And, and you're tired of paying, uh, you know, every three, four or five years to replace all of your equipment and things like that. Want to really look at how cloud can benefit you. What I suggest you allow us to do, Rich, is to do an assessment. We'll do a cybersecurity assessment. We'll do a cloud assessment. We'll do an asset inventory and come back to you with our recommendations on how you can, you know, begin adopting some of these services to help you grow and maybe even reduce your costs, certainly strengthen your cybersecurity and get a handle on the sprawl that you have. You've got cloud app sprawl, you've got user sprawl, right? And you want to make sure you do that. And Rich, um, what we typically do is we charge for that assessment. And but here's what I'll do. If our assessment comes back and requires, you know, some remediation to be done, what I'm happy to do, Rich, is discuss if you allow us to do the remediation for you and then maybe an, even sign an agreement for ongoing service to maybe apply some of that initial investment that you're making to get the assessment, the recommendations towards those services. How do you feel about that? And see what I've done now, Rich, is I've, I've, I've added a tremendous amount of strategic value in that conversation. And I've let you know that this stuff costs money and we're going to deliver a high level assessment and provide you recommendations that remember the reason I'm sitting here is you're not getting that from anyone else. And so now the way that you respond lets me know how serious you are. And I know a lot of partners on today's webinar asked how many of you are charging for assessments today? I saw more hands raised than I've seen in a long time on that specific question. So we are evolving. I think the MSPs understand now that, that we've got to change 
for today's buyer. And we have to be much more strategic. No, you know, try to stop, stop reselling equipment and hardware that you can't get now, right? And be more strategic and deliver these assessments and deliver even from a compliance perspective, right? That's the big one. Um, so I think there's a lot of value in that discussion. It, it separates you from, from your competitors. It, it uh, builds confidence and trust in your prospect in reflecting you as, you know, a true expert and allowing them to know that, you know, they can get that support directly from you where they may not have the option with their existing provider or anyone else. Yeah, you know, th this is one of those topics, Eric, um, that it comes up on a fairly regular basis among uh, Channel Pro readers and, and people at our events. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of, of Channel Pros out there who use an assessment of some kind or another um, as a, a business development tool with sales prospects. And there are, it's good to hear maybe this number is going down, but there are a lot of people who um, think this is my foot in the door. I can't charge for it or they won't do it. I'm not going to charge for it. I'm going to offer them to this free. And that's what's going to get me in there and give me an opportunity to potentially um, sign a contract and turn uh, the sales pro prospect into a client. Um, and I personally have always, more, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, uh, an editor, not uh, somebody actually running an IT business. But if I think about the, the people I know in the industry who are high growth, very successful, they will charge for that assessment. And they will do that because that signals to the customer, this is something of value. Um, the work that we do is, is meaningful. If you're doing it for me for free, how valuable could this possibly be? How, how big a deal could it possibly be? Sending the message to the customer that we're going to do something for you here. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. I, I love you know, your suggestion that you can maybe credit them for uh, the cost of that down the road. But we're going to do something for you here that is immediately um, useful and delivers immediate value to your business. And it shows you that the work we do is um, serious and something that is, is going to be beneficial to you. So I, I um, love this advice. And, and like I said, there, I, there are a lot of people out there, though, who I think are probably listening or watching right now and are thinking, well, I, I don't do that. I can't do that. Yeah. You now, two points that I want to just double down on that, that you mentioned, Rich. Yes. You know, the objection may be, well, you know, so-and-so showed up the other day and they'll do it for free. And, you know, of course you overcome that one easily. Well, you get what you pay for, Rich. I mean, and, and everybody on their website is free assessment, free assessment, free assessment. You want to look different than them. And immediately when there's, va when there's, you know, a fee for that, there's a perceived value. You're going to deliver. I mean, and if, if, you if you're prepared, you can say, oh, let me show you a couple of examples of these free assessments. Here's your two pages, right? Here's what you'll get from most people, right? And let me show you what we deliver, right? And and that's where you really, um, you know, drive that wedge between you and your competitors. And the second thing, I just want to, you know, just clarify that even though we are crediting them a portion of that, or maybe all of it toward their agreement or the remediation, I'm not losing that money, Rich. I don't suggest we do that. I'm saying I'm incorporating that. And if it's a 36 month agreement, then, hey, I'm making it back because I am adding that and I'm going to recoup it over 36 months. Right. So I'm not losing that. It's just a little bit of a way to show good faith and let the client know, hey, we will credit it. But again, I'm going to make it back over time. Make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great stuff. Thank you for that. Leaves us with time for just one more story this week, Eric. And I, I promise you, I am not uh, showing off or anything like that. The true fact of the matter is, though, I have a vacation coming up in about five, six weeks, and I'm going to be in Thailand for a week for the first time. Uh, and now I know what I need to do first night uh, in Thailand, because it turns out that uh, they recently, a hotel in Bangkok recently set the Guinness world record for the world's largest Negroni, world's largest cocktail of that particular kind, um, uh, uh, eleven hundred and nine pints uh, of this uh, this cocktail, uh, uh, Eric. And um, like, what, what do you serve? I mean, they didn't have like a cocktail glass big enough to hold that much alcohol. What they what they poured it into was an iced acrylic container, five point six feet tall, uh, and weighing about eight hundred and eighty two pounds. Uh, I'm, I'm significantly lighter than 882 pounds, but I'm also about an inch, inch and a half uh, shorter than five, 
0.6 feet. They, they served this in a container taller than me, um, Eric. So, uh, and I did, I don't know what that costs basically. I, I, I wonder what, how do you tip on, uh, on a Negroni that big? Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of bottles of alcohol, Rich. And it gives me an idea for an MSP happy hour. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, that is uh, that is a, a an interesting uh, Guinness Book of World Records uh, to, to compete for. So, Rich, will you happen to be maybe visiting that establishment just to see if, uh, you know, what, what one of their Negronis tastes like? I'm not suggesting, you know, you try to just chug a lug and down, you know, the record-breaking container. But uh, just wondering if uh, your travels might take you by there. Uh, I, I will not actually be in uh, Bangkok uh, on this trip, or, so probably not. But uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they, even if they just kind of have the iced five foot six tall acrylic container in the lobby, it uh, it would be a thing to see. That's for sure. It would be uh, bucket list, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> all righty folks well that is all the time we have for you this week on the five minute roundup we thank you so much for joining us we're going to be back again next week with another episode for you you know what we are both a video and a podcast these days so if you're watching the video but you like podcasts go to wherever you get your podcasts whether that's google or apple or spotify stitcher or amazon you name it you're going to find us there please subscribe rate review um it's uh, going to help other folks out there find the show more easily we appreciate it um, if you happen to be listening to the podcast right now, but you're curious to check us out on video, easiest thing to do is go to YouTube, look for the Channel Pro Network channel there. Another opportunity to uh, become a subscriber. And if you click the little bell icon, you can also get notified when the new episodes become available. Now, if you want to read all sorts of Datocon coverage that I posted this week, plus get great business growth advice for your company on a daily basis, please visit channelpronetwork.com. We've got Amazing new stuff for you going live there every day. To learn more about Eric and the work he does with his clients, you're going to want to visit ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K Simpson.com. Once again, folks, we thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will see you again in another week. Until then, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. already. <laughs>